Hello, this is Drew Collins, Rector of St. Andrew's Anglican Church in Savannah, Georgia. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent. It is the 19th of March, and I would invite you to pray with me the collect appointed uh, for today, followed by the collect for Ash Wednesday, which is to be said throughout Lent. Grant, we beseech the Almighty God that we who for our evil deeds do worthily deserve to be punished by the comfort of thy grace may mercifully be relieved. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthy lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here beginneth the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread, so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii, I would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so, that the, men, so the men sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets from fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Well, sometimes I can be a little slow on the uptake, and uh, I have to admit that as I was preparing this, it's, it's, uh, it occurred to me, well, you've preached on this a lot. This topic, the feeding of the 5,000, now, usually when I preach on it, I mention, uh, this is unique in that it is the only miracle uh, that Jesus performed uh, that is recorded in all four Gospels. Not only the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but also the Gospel of St. John. It is unique in that way, but that didn't really explain why it seemed to me that I was preaching on this topic uh, so frequently. And so I did a quick survey of the prayer book, and I realized that this is appointed in the Sunday propers for Lent 4 today, but also Trinity 7 and the Sunday next before Advent. Now, during during the Trinity season, uh, it is my practice to preach through uh, books. We've been going through St. Mark for a couple of years now. Um, and I, I enjoy doing that, and it's a great blessing to me. I hope it is to to my parish here and to those of you who watch this, whether or not you're a member of St. Andrews. But uh, I do that during the Trinity season or during the green seasons, for lack of a better, uh, green Sundays, for lack of a better term. But um, even though we did not cover it in on Trinity 7, we covered it in preaching through Mark. So... What I would deduce from that is, first of all, that this is an important, of course, all of the Bible is inspired and important for us to hear, but this is particularly so, or peculiarly so, if you will, because God saw to it that this miracle was recounted in all four Gospels. And moreover, that the church has decided the same thing because the prayer book lectionary, the one-year lectionary, and the classic book of common prayer uh, has been in use for many, many years, and it evolved from it evolved from uh, 
ancient lectionaries. And so the church, in its wisdom, decided that the, con the church needed to hear this gospel read three Sundays a year. And it's probably because there is much here for us to learn, but also the feeding of the 5,000 is a miraculous and very powerful uh, miracle that Jesus performed. Jesus had been teaching. He crossed the other way to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. They had seen the healing. They had heard the teaching. They had seen the healing, and so they followed him, and Jesus went up on the mountain. Actually, more accurately, probably, he went up into the mountain, not so much on a plain, but he is there in the mountains. He sits down with his disciples and has fellowship with them, and then he lifts his eyes, and he sees this large crowd coming toward him, and he asks Philip a question. Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? St. John tells us that he did this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. And that's important for us to remember. He was trying Philip partially to test him, to increase his faith, to see what Philip's response would be, although he knew that as well. But there are times when God tests our faith. God always knows what God will do. When we face the trials and tribulations of this life, God always knows what the way out of it will be for us. But sometimes he allows us to undergo that testing to increase our faith, to draw us closer to him, to work on us. Because I don't know about you, but my tendency is when things are going well, when there's money in the bank and things just seem to be smooth sailing, I'm not so bold as to say, God, I can take this, but in my mind, to some degree, I can dare think that if I'm not careful. And so it is that God sometimes tests us to make us utterly dependent upon him. And if you think back to your life, to your experiences, if your life has been anything like mine, those times when I was not sure of what the way out would be, when I did not know the answer, the quick and easy answer, that was when I was drawn closest to God and in, at times when my faith grew the most. This past week, I attended the funeral of a, a very dear friend of mine. She and her husband, uh, her husband remains a friend. Her, her father is one of my heroes in the faith. He's still alive at the age of 96. But a young lady, a physician, who was um, stricken with cancer about four years ago and went through treatment. And it was noted in her obituary that after that, she drew closer to God. Now, she had walked with God for many years. She'd been a, a, a vestry uh, member, vestry at her church. Uh, and she walked with God uh, for many years. Uh, according to her, she had a bit of a, a youthful rebellion, although she granted graduated uh, magna cum laude at college and went on to medical school which uh, and became a physician. So I suspect that most parents would be delighted to have that kind of rebellion. If that's what a rebellious stage is going to look like, I imagine most parents would say, may that be the rebellious stage. But it was noted that in the years following that first bout with cancer, she had drawn closer to God. Her faith had been tested, and so she drew closer and closer to him. Now, our testing may not come in the form of cancer. For most of us, it probably won't. I certainly would not wish that dread disease on anyone. I've had my own mother suffer from it. I've had other loved ones suffer from it as well. But it is in those times of testing that we draw closest to God. So Philip answers him, but not really answer, not really providing an answer, but providing an observation. 200 denarii would not, be, would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. 
Now, denarius was roughly a day's wages for a laborer. So 200 denarii is the better part of a year's salary, more than half of a year's salary. And he observes that that would not be enough to provide food for all of these people. Then one of his disciples, Andrew, patron of this church, Simon Peter's brother, makes the observation, well, there's There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? And as I always mention when I preach through this, those barley loaves were probably coarse loaves of bread. They were not the the bread that we, many of us enjoy probably too much today. And the fish were probably pickled fish. This was hardly luxurious eating. But there is that boy there. And so Jesus says, have the people sit down. There was much grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in number. Now, actually more than 5,000. 5,000 was almost certainly only the men. But he has them sit down, and he takes the loaves, and he blesses them. He gives thanks. He distributes them, and, and also so with the fish. And the people eat as much as they want. This is not some instance of, well, trying to to make it last longer. Uh, Perhaps you have had times when you were going to have soup for dinner, and lo and behold, somebody comes out of the blue, you add a little bit of water to the soup to try to stretch it out. This is not that case. The people ate until they were filled. And when they were filled... He commands his disciples to gather up the fragments so that nothing may be lost. And they do so, so much so they gather up to the baskets. They, there were 12 uh, baskets. It has been suggested that 12 baskets, 12 disciples, that it actually was provision for them uh, for further journeying. One for each of the apostles. But then when the people saw the sign that had been done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. The people there saw this as a confirmation, as an indication as well of Jesus' messiahship. Most of them were Jews. They knew well what had happened in the wilderness, that there had been no bread or there had been no food. And so God provided this unusual kind of bread And God would provide just enough. If they tried to store it, except on the day preceding the Sabbath, it would would stink. It was made to increase their faith. But they were aware that this was the sign of a Messiah. It pointed to Jesus. So too, when we were lost in our trespasses and sins, and in need of a Savior, and in need of forgiveness, God provided a lamb for us, the lamb, Jesus Christ, both the sacrifice and the priest in that propitiation that once for all took away the sins of his people. So too he provides us with a meal, a simple meal, Simple but profound, bread and wine, very simple, common elements. But in this meal, we feed on the body and blood of Christ and are strengthened and draw nearer to him. So thanks be to God for his provision. Thanks be to God that he was able to take those, that he was able to feed the people of Israel in the wilderness. And thanks be to God that he was able to take those five barley loaves and those two fish and feed the 5,000. Thanks be to God that he continues to feed us through his means of grace so that we may serve him and proclaim him to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.